Today I just want to make a quick little mini-sode about Brexit. Because if you thought this waking bureaucratic nightmare was almost over, well, pop a NyQuil and buckle up. Turns out the House of Lords just told Boris Johnson do not pass go and do not collect $200. So what the heck happened since the last time we talked about this issue? Well, first, Boris Johnson's party won a majority in Parliament's House of Commons, which in most people's minds made a deal Brexit all but guaranteed. I mean, now we can pass the deal we struck with the European Union through Parliament, right? Britain's divorce from the European Union finally looks like it'll become a reality. Today, British lawmakers approved Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Brexit legislation in principle. It passed through the House of Commons, it passed through the European Union, and now nothing was in Britain's way of finally becoming the untied kingdom. Well, spoke a little too soon on that one, didn't we? As on Monday, Britain's House of Lords looked at this deal that passed between these two groups and said, we have some ideas first. First, just what the heck is the House of Lords? Sounds like some kind of Dowden Abbey white landowners only establishment. If you're watching this next part in Britain, sorry for the patronizing simplification, but I'm a New Yorker, while you're an old Yorker. So I'm going to explain it in the context of the American government. The House of Commons is like the House of Representatives, where seats are distributed more proportionate to population. This would make Boris Johnson in this metaphor a little bit like Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. And the House of Lords, well that would be like the Senate. If the House of Representatives passes a bill but the Senate doesn't approve, that bill is going to go nowhere. A concept that most Americans are pretty familiar with at this point. If the House of Representatives passes a bill and then the Senate passes a version of that bill with amendments, well, we head into reconciliation where leaders from both groups come together to negotiate which changes from which version of the bill will make it into the final product. This is where the United Kingdom, if you can still call it that at this point, is regarding this Brexit deal. Except, and I never thought I'd say this, but the American Congress might actually be more efficient. Ping pong. What happens once the Commons and the Lords have both checked a bill? Any changes made go to the other house to be looked at. But if that house disagrees, it may take the other's changes out. One house may rewrite its changes to see if the other will think again. This process may continue, and a bill goes back and forth. Wow, that sounds like a nightmare. I've never been so happy we won the Revolutionary War, our Brexit. So the House of Commons handed the Brexit deal to the House of Lords, who amended it and then promptly handed it right back to the House of Commons again. What amendments did they make? Well, the main amendment was called the Dubs Amendment, named after Lord Dubs, a once child refugee who escaped the Nazis. Now that's not a random unfun fact about the guy, it's actually core to what he's proposing today. His memo would ensure that unaccompanied children could continue to come to the UK to join a relative. Now, An earlier version of the Brexit House of Commons bill saw the UK signing an agreement with the EU on this subject. But following Boris Johnson's victory, this guarantee was weakened, instead only requiring the government to make statements to Parliament on the subject after Brexit passed. Now, I've had parents for long enough to know exactly what we'll talk about it later means, so this amendment might be important. This amendment would seek to restore the original agreement. A Downing Street spokesman representing Boris Johnson said the government was disappointed by the defeat and confirmed it would not accept the amendment. The reason the House of Commons isn't enthusiastic about this amendment isn't that they hate kids, puppies, and rainbows. But rather, ministers say they are intent on reaching a deal with the EU on family reunification, but do not want an obligation to negotiate on the matter included in the Brexit bill. Now, I will say that it was the BBC who put the word intent in quotes, so someone's skeptical. As far as next steps on this amendment go, in all likelihood, MPs will reject the changes and send the bill back to the Lords, a parliamentary process known as ping pong. But ultimately, the government is expected to get its way. So at this point, we're seeing the two houses of parliament play hot potato with amendments. 
I'm going to pass it. Oh, you passed it back to me again. Let me just hold on to it right before the no deal Brexit deadline and pass it again. Four other amendments that were passed by the House of Lords but are getting significantly less attention are first, an amendment that would give EU citizens in the UK the automatic right to stay, rather than forcing them to apply at the Home Office, and it would ensure that they can get physical proof of their rights. Now the concern here is less about making French people fill out a few additional documents and more about a recent Theresa May scandal. She had a policy designed to make the United Kingdom as inhospitable as possible for illegal migrants, and it worked so well it resulted in the deportation and threats of deportation of legal immigrants to the UK. Britain's Home Office has set immigrants up to fail and it must undergo total reform. Those are the damning findings from a cross-party group of MPs looking into the government's treatment of the so-called Windrush generation of immigrants from the Caribbean. People aren't exactly chomping at the bit to put that office in charge of the status of all EU citizens living in Britain. Signups for Brexit residents are already online and more than 2.7 million people have so far applied. Nearly 2.5 million of those have been told they can continue to live and work in the UK after Brexit, while six serious or persistent criminals have had their applications rejected. The final points are all super nuanced, and that's coming from me. They revolve around the British courts continuing to use EU precedent in their legal system. So those are the amendments of concern. Now what? Well, let's fire up the old ping pong game and see who, if anyone, wins. The amended Brexit deal will go back to the House of Commons for a vote on Wednesday, where the majority was already saying we're not planning to accept any amendments. The government's Brexit legislation, including amendments made by the Lords, will return to the Commons, where they're likely to be removed before the bill returns to the Upper House for approval. At this point, the House of Lords will have two options, put the amendments back or say, you know what, actually you guys had a good point. Now this might sound like the literal definition of a circle jerk, but there is an end point. Boris Johnson could trigger the Parliamentary Act of 1917 if it makes two parliamentary round trips in a certain amount of time with no signs of compromise. This would see the Speaker of the House of Commons say, yeah, this is getting nowhere. It can finally pass without the House of Lords. We'll just send it over to the Queen to sign and it's law. Although with Brexit's track record, Queen Elizabeth II is probably going to refuse to sign it until Prince Harry comes back. Because of this parliamentary trump card that Johnson has, most people speculate that this game of hot potato would spark a constitutional clash. So it's unlikely that the Lords will seek to amend Johnson's bill when it comes back to them. So that's exactly what's going on, or in this case not going on, with Brexit right now. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe because my new year's resolution is to get to a thousand of you guys and I'm at 902 right now and I can taste how close I am. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.